Welcome to the Garden Show. We are in Osborne, Kansas, and our guest gardener today is Chris Ayers. Welcome to the show, Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we're here to see your garden, and you have many wonderful things that we are looking at, and, and you've done it all in the cold. I've managed to keep <laughs> it heated in here and just kept everything going. And Yep. So we're in the greenhouse, and you have quite a unique setup here, and you've been doing this all winter, haven't you? Yes. I yes. Have. So tell us what is the most unique part about your garden. Well, it starts with uh, the goldfish. I've got, I'm doing an aquaponic system, and it uh, starts with the goldfish. Um, without the goldfish, I'm not able to grow anything, so. They're pretty good. They play a pretty good role in this. Um, so basically, I've got 300 goldfish, and I've got some catfish in there. So the goldfish provide the fertilizer. Yes. 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 Oh, so that way, I don't have to add a liquid fertilizer. It's pretty much just the goldfish, and I don't have to add fertilizer. So. Okay. So what comes out of the goldfish? is going into the water and then the water goes through your plants but tell us how that happens I've got a pump tank and I got a fish tank the fish tank are separate from the pump tank and uh, they pretty much the grow beds will be pumped up and then once it's pumped up then they return to the fish tank and then the fish tank will overflow into the pump tank Okay, and did you have a lot of help getting all of this organized? I've just done a little research and uh, put the system together myself and working the kinks out and everything seems to be going good right now. Great. Well, how did you get the idea to make such a place? Uh, I kind of wanted to be a little bit on the more healthy side, I guess, and I decided to go into a little bit more organic growing, I guess you would say, instead of fertilizers and chemicals and stuff like that that would harm us a little bit, I guess. Um, I wanted to kind of go on the organic side, I guess. Okay, but did somebody inspire you to think about doing such a thing? Yes. Uh, when I was in seventh grade, I had a teacher that let me uh, take care of flowers in her classroom and uh, so I, I uh, she let me take care of the flowers and that, at that point in seventh grade I was always wanting to do a greenhouse. I always had in the back of my mind that I probably wouldn't have a greenhouse but it happened to come about this last year and uh, so I was able to do a greenhouse. So having been a teacher of a big part of my life, I'm excited that you were inspired by another teacher. So I'm sure she would be excited about that too. Yes, she is. Yes. And so she knows. Yes. Yes. That's great. Well, what's happening now? We've got some noise going on. Well, the pump just kicked in. Uh, it's pumping up the grow beds and uh, pretty much just they're going to start returning back to the fish tank once the grow beds start emptying out. Once they get pumped up to a certain level, they're going to start emptying out. And uh, when that happens, then the fish tank's going to overflow back into the pump tank. Okay, so because I don't know a lot about this, you'll have to tell me, are these the grow beds? Yes, these are the grow beds. Um, I've got uh, pea gravel, which is just a gravel that is the substance that I'm growing in, growing medium. Um, instead of dirt, I use rock. And why is that? Wouldn't dirt make sense? Uh, the dirt will actually get pulled through my, my siphoning. Uh, I've got a bell siphon that I've made and uh, I pretty much, if I use dirt, it's going to end up back in my fish tank or my pump tank. Um, okay. So, so it makes more sense to have the gravel that you have. 
Correct. So I see that really not very much of the top is wet, so it doesn't, it comes only to a certain level and then it cycles back through? Yes, it, it'll come up to a certain level about an inch before the top of the gravel and once it hits that point I've got an overflow and it'll just start overflow and then it'll siphon the grow beds out pulling oxygen through the gravel and and cycling out. So you did all this pipe uh, configuration yourself? Yes. So you must have some expertise in plumbing. Yes I do that's what I do I do plumbing and and so that come in handy, plumbing in all the grow beds and Absolutely. all the pumps and all the valves and everything it takes to make the system work. I see. So, you, how long does it do the watering? It run, the pump will run for 15 minutes and shut off for 45 minutes around the clock. Oh, so it's set on a timer. It's on a timer. Okay. Yep. Now, when you planted these, did you go to some place and get the plants and put them there? Uh, planted the onions from the bulbs, just basically just like they are. I planted them from the bulb and then they came up. And your other plants? Everything's been planted by seed except some tomatoes. Okay. I don't suppose that you have any bees in here, at least I don't see any, so I wonder how you uh, do the pollination or do how do they get pollinated? Well, I, I will self-pollinate each flower that you see to produce tomatoes. Um, I'll show you how I okay. do the tomatoes. Great. I use a Vita B. Uh, it's for pollination. Um, it's for pollinating the flowers and it just basically vibrates the pollen loose out of the flowers and once it's released then it's been pollinated. Cherry tomatoes don't have to be uh, cross pollinated so basically I just just touch them and it vibrates the pollen loose. You just go from flower to flower. Oh I saw some. And once it's been pollinated then it'll close the flower will close tonight and it'll start having the tomato on there okay so the magic about this is the vibrating yes okay it's basically acting like a bee coming up to it flying oh. with its wings i see i understand okay now you were saying a while ago that you s sometimes propagate the plants by taking off bits and putting them here. Can you show us how that went, might yes. be? Uh, I will, I just, I just pull off a sucker that's just on the leaf and um, I just stick it in the grow bed like that and just put it, just put a little bit of rock around it so it'll stay in place and then it'll start producing a tomato plant. Basically, like outside, you would put in the dirt. Yes. And it gets roots and everything just on its own? Yes. Yep. You don't have to pre-root it. Or, okay. And I that's don't. how you got these? Yep. These, these have been just pulled off of the, the original plants over here, and they've just been stuck in the grow bed, and they've started producing tomatoes. Well, they sure have, because look at this. A whole row of them, and pretty soon they'll be red, and you can pick them and eat them. Well, let's see what other kinds of plants you have. You have lots of different kinds of plants. I see cucumbers here, and what else? I've got beets and uh, pole beans. Pole beans are like regular green beans. Uh, they just go vertical instead of bush plants. And they're starting to make a canopy on that wire you have there. And so you have some more tomatoes. These tomatoes have been pulled off of the original tomato plants and uh, they've just, I've just stuck them in there and they've started producing tomatoes just like you see here. Mm -hmm. They're looking great. And you've made use of the space underneath them for the flowers which are doing their thing and now it must be cycling again. Yes, the pump just kicked ah. off and uh, so everything's finishing out draining and and 
that's how the system operates 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay. And I like what you've done here with using the space really well about putting other plants. You've even done strawberries up the way. Yeah, I've, uh, I've got 46 strawberry plants and uh, I've done vertical because I just don't have the space in small greenhouse, but um, I've got a few of them that are already starting to yes. produce strawberries. And so it's working pretty good. It is. And I love your flowers, but I am the person who really loves flowers, so I enjoy those a lot. Now you have some, I see some lavender here. I've got some lavender and uh, cantaloupe in that oh. row bed. And wow, a burning I didn't... bush. Oh. I didn't think about growing cantaloupe. That won't that after a while that will get a lot of um, vines. Vines. Yeah, I'll I'll probably just let them take over the grow bed and uh -huh. pretty much grow wherever they want to grow. Sure. Okay. Now we're at the section of looking at these flowers or not flowers but vegetables, and I see that you have corn, and is it, the next thing looks like onions, but is it? It's chives. Chives. Yes. chives and onions look very much the same. And these are? Peas. Peas. And they're not doing their thing yet, but they look very healthy. Yeah, they're not quite tall enough. Uh-huh. And these are beans. And let's see. I think there are some. Can I pick one? Yes. <laughs> All right. It's looking good. And there are enough where I think you could get enough for supper, I think, in here. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Let's go down again and look at the um, fish and talk some more about what is happening with them. Okay. All right. Well, Chris, we're looking at the fish now, and I guess I need you to explain how this greenhouse is different from somebody who would just use water because the fish are making it different. So can you explain something about the differences? Yes, uh, I've got uh, 300 goldfish. They produce nitrite and that the plants take nitrite in and produce, the plants will produce nitrate for the fish. So it's an ongoing ecosystem that just keeps, keeps going around in a circle basically. So. They produce the fertilizer that I need. That's the only way I'm able to grow, so without adding a liquid fertilizer to it. So no miracle grow in here? No miracle grow the in miracle here. The miracle grow is growing right here? Yep, with okay. the fish. Okay, all right. So the difference between, this is called? Aquaponics. Aquaponics. And somebody else might be using what? Hydroponics. Hydroponics. The difference between hydroponics and aquaponics is hydroponics is without fish and they add the liquid fertilizer to the tanks that are pumped up to the grow beds and I'm doing aquaponics with fish so I don't have to add fertilizers and stuff like that it's an it just the fish do their thing and that's all I need all right you know what we need to feed them do you what do you feed them um, I feed them flake food that I I usually feed them about one or two handfuls. I usually feed them twice a day, so I usually feed them a pretty good amount because there's so many of them in there, and they'll come up to the top. And, yes, they are. Oh my goodness! And they're like piranhas. They like <laughs> they like to eat all the time. So oh, they're happy to be fed. Yeah, they they usually twice a day, usually in the morning and evening. The fish are very happy. They're really right here on top. I don't know if they... Nope, they're not going to come up and lick my fingers. <laughs> but anyway, I think that maybe we should go to another part of the garden and see what else is over there. Well, we're in a different section of your garden now, and it, this part has soil. So we've gone away from the um, gravel part, and you have some very interesting things in these pots. Tell us about that. 
Oh, I've got some pink tulips in here. I've got some early red riding hood tulips. Uh, some yellow and white tulips. And I've got some banana trees. So you're experimenting with banana trees. They show probably, when in their glory, they'll be really tall. They, they're a dwarf. Oh, okay. They're a dwarf banana tree, and they get about four to five foot tall. Oh, well, then they'll, they'll be fine in here. So this will be lovely when it starts. I mean, you've already got a good start with them, but when they start doing their colors, they'll be beautiful. Yes. Yes. And you have geraniums that are going and some philodendron yes and some marigolds and one of them is even blooming already and some sunflowers sunflowers and what are these those delphinians delphinians oh and poppies poppies so oh and look at your roses they're already doing it mm. they're beautiful now, it seems to me that earlier you told me that these were, were started from a rose bush. Yes, they from were just cuttings and I rooted them in the grow beds and transplanted them into the pots. This one is really already going big, big and strong. So this one will be a sturdy one before long. And these old guys will catch up with them in not very long. So. I love this one. It's got beautiful pink blossoms. And then you have some seedlings that you've just planted. Some of them are up and some of them are not. I've got some colors, uh, or I've got some different varieties of uh, seeds that I've started. I've got some peppers uh, that I'll transplant to the garden once it's warm enough outside. Mm -hmm. So do you have an outside garden too? We will this year. You will? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, you have a beautiful mix of um, vegetables and flowers, and I'm assuming you'll put some of these flowers outside as it gets warmer. Yes. So they've got a great start. You've got a great start on all of us because your sunflowers will bloom long before ours when we put them in the ground as seed. So... Um, then you've got pots that you can just put out without uh, taking them out of the pots. And you've got a smathering. These look like Martha Washington geraniums because they are sort of lacy. They look a little bit different than these kind. Yeah, it's a different variety. I think there's like a bunch of different varieties of geraniums, but mm -hmm. they're just a different kind of geranium. So. An allium? An alliums, yep. And I don't know what this one is. That's an allium. Oh, uh, yes. I've got two alliums planted in here, and this will eventually look that like one. this. Oh, and look at the seed. Yes. So each one of these seeds could be a, a separate yep. allium. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a beautiful. So once they, once they release, I don't know if they release in the spring or the fall. I don't know what time of year they do, but... Um, once they release and the seeds fall down and then they start to start another bulb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, oh, and tell us about this. You've got some pineapple cuttings yeah, I've started. I've got uh, pineapples that I've just went to the grocery store and twisted off the tops and started the uh, pineapples in the grow beds just long enough so they can get roots. And then I've planted them into dirt, and one or two years, I'll have some pineapple. Well, that's exciting. Well, Chris, we have so enjoyed seeing your aquaponic um, operation and all of your flowers and your vegetables. And um, I hope that the, the listeners and the viewers will enjoy this garden as much as I have. So thank you for watching The Garden Show. Mm -hmm.